In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro launches the great Josefa Joaquina Sanchez movement 22 years after the golpe d'etat carried out against Commander Hugo Chavez. In Ecuador, citizens demonstrated in front of the International Court of Justice building in Quito to demand freedom for former Vice President Jorge Glass. And in Palestine, the Israeli regime killed eight Palestinian civilians near the Ali Arab Hospital during its bombing raids in the central Gaza Strip. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Venezuela, President Nicolás Maduro launches the great Josefa Joaquín Sánchez movement 22 years after the coup d'etat carried out against Commander Hugo Chávez. During the event, the Venezuelan president recalled that more than 5,400,000 women have registered in the great mission Venezuela Women. He also swore in the team promoting the movement made up of 517 leaders of the women's social organizations in the territory to move forward and take on new challenges in the country. In addition, the head of state applauded the patriotic heroism of the Venezuelan women during the government of former President Chavez, who accompanied him unconditionally in his projects. Because the Venezuelan woman from the first day that Hugo Chavez appeared accompanied him, embraced him as a mother and always took him through all the protected roads, because the Venezuelan woman was the first one. that went to the streets to look for Chávez on April 11, 22 years ago with the coup d'etat, because it was the Venezuelan woman that went to the quarters, to the streets, to Miraflores to shout that he was kidnapped, because from where so much courage, because it was the Venezuelan woman, and it is the Venezuelan woman who was the first to face the sanctions the blockade, to provide her children with food when they hid IT from US, when they forbade US to import IT, when they blocked US on all four sides. In Venezuela, authorities of the National Electoral Council and international observers signed an agreement to accompany the presidential elections of 2024. During the meeting, the president of the National Electoral Council, Elvis Amoroso, transmitted to observers that the Venezuelan electoral system has given repeated signs of its, its strength and transparency. Likewise, the president of the Council of Electoral Experts of Latin America, Nicanor Moscoso, said that the work they will do will be strictly as observers as they, and the results of the work will be known by the Electoral Council. In this sense, Elvis Amoroso emphasized that the next election fulfills points of the Barbados Agreement, including the holding of elections in the second half of 2024. We hope that you will accompany us in all this trajectory here on July 28, with all the objectivity to present your final report to the National Electoral Council your suggestions that you may have in the course of this day or this electoral holiday. In Ecuador, citizens demonstrated in front of the International Court of Justice building in Quito to demand freedom for former Vice President Jorge Glass. The demonstrators raised their voices to express their support for Glass and thanked Mexico for its actions of diplomatic protection. The demonstrators denounced the government for kidnapping, stressing that the accusations against Jorge Glass are false and represent an attack against the truth. This demonstration comes after the Ecuadorian authorities under the orders of the Novoa government broke into the Mexican embassy in Quito on April 5th, attacking its personal and kidnapping former Vice President Jorge Glass. We are protesting the injustice that has been committed against former Vice President Jorge Glass because ID was set. The case of Odebrecht was already eliminated. They unjustly accused him. They locked him up. They condemned him. And despite that, they kidnapped him from the Mexican embassy. Reason why we are indignant here and why we protest because the government has kidnapped him. Jorge Glass. 
former vice president, the only one who fought for the rights of Ecuadorians. He with President Correa, we are here supporting for the freedom of Jorge Glass. In Brazil, 188 people involved in the 2023 COP attempt were convicted. The amount increased after the Federal Supreme Court sanctioned 15 others responsible for the assault on Palo Alto's facilities in an attempt to overthrow President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva in January 2023. The charges were armed criminal association, violent abolition of the democratic state of law, attempted COP, qualified damage and deterioration of declared patrimony. Minister Alexandre de Moraes detailed that the messages, photos, videos and other publications in social networks were used as evidence by the Attorney General's office against the COP perpetrators. Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel announced on Thursday on his ex account that the Prime Minister of Granada, Deacon Mitchell, arrived in the country on an official visit on the occasion of the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. The Prime Minister of Granada visits Cuba as part of the program he will develop there. Mitchell will hold meetings with high-level representatives of the state and government of the country. His agenda also includes a meeting with his Cuban counterpart, Manuel Marrero. Moreover, he will participate in a ceremony to commemorate the 45th anniversary of the establishment of bilateral relations between Cuba and Grenada to be held at the Aula Magna of the University of Havana. To close his visit, Mitchell will travel to the eastern province of Santiago de Cuba, where he will pay homage to the tombs of the national hero, José Martí, and the historic leader of the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro. On Thursday, the Ministry of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Cuba reported a helicopter accident in which three of its members died. The note indicates that on the morning of Thursday, April 11th, a helicopter carrying out a mission of interest of the Revolutionary Armed Forces crashed at the Antonio Maceo Grajales International Airport in Santiago de Cuba. In the accident, three of its officials' crew members died. The note adds that a commission of, the that, of that ministry is investigating, investigating the causes of the accident. President Miguel Díaz-Canel offered his condolences to the families of the deceased. For its part, the Nicaraguan government lamented the death of the officials of the Cuban Armed Forces. In a statement, the Nicaraguan government said, Our most heartfelt condolences and our ever fraternal solidarity before the tragic death of the comrades of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Cuba, Major Dairon Gonzalez Espinosa, First Lieutenant Carlos Enrique Gómez, and Sub Lieutenant Junior Céspedes Escalona, which moves us all as a family. The statement assures, we ask you to transfer these genuine feelings of sadness to the relatives and friends of the comrades that the heroic Cuba collects as heroes of the battles that they will undoubtedly continue to triumph. Nicaraguan government concluded, to you, Raul, Miguel, comrades of the armed forces of victorious Cuba, with Fidel in our hearts, we say, always beyond, towards the light, towards the truth. Salak authorities announced that following a request from Mexico, the organization's virtual summit on violations of international conventions by Ecuador has been rescheduled for April 16th. Through a post on the social network X, the president pro tempore of CELAC, Xiomara Castro, stated, As pro tempore president of CELAC, I announced that, at the request of Mexico, the extraordinary virtual summit of heads of state and government has been rescheduled for next Tuesday, April 16th at 9 a.m. local time in Honduras. This call is due to Ecuador's violation of the 1961 Vienna Convention and the 1954 Asylum Convention. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. 
In India, thousands of devotees gathered at the Hama Masjid in Delhi on Thursday to offer prayers on the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, a two- or three-day holiday at the end of the Muslim ho holy fasting month of Ramadan, one of the two main Islamic holidays. The main celebration was held at the Jama Masjid Mosque in New Delhi, where the faithful performed special prayers to bid farewell to Ramadan, a month-long period of fasting, prayer and reflection. The end of fasting festival represents a moment of joy, gratitude and union among Muslim families who represent 14% of India's 1.4 billion inhabitants at present, being the largest minority group in the Hindu majority nation. During Eid al-Fatir, most people travel to visit each other in the city or out of town and children are given new clothes and spending money for the occasion. Let's review some facts about the Eid al-Fatir festival that marks the end of the fasting month of Ramadan for Muslims. The Eid is determined according to the observation of the crescent moon. In Ramadan, fasting begins at dawn after the last meal before sunrise. The fast is broken at sunset by eating sweet dates and water. Meanwhile, the Eid al-Fitr celebrations last between two and four days. Believers surrounded by friends and family pray and eat traditional sweets. In 2024, Ramadan took place from March 11th to April 9th in most Islamic countries, but Saudi Arabia, Qatar and the Arab Emirates, they ended Eid al-Fatir on April 10th due to the crescent moon was not visible on April 8th in those countries. Arab leaders led the first day of Eid al-Fatir prayers on Wednesday calling for regional peace. During daylight hours in Ramadan, Muslims must not insult, lie, criticize others, have sex and smoke tobacco as main actions to be closer to God. In Palestine, the Israeli regime killed eight Palestinian civilians near the Ali Arab Hospital during its bombing raids in the central Gaza Strip. The occupation army troops intensified their attacks, worsening the situation in the center of the Gaza Strip. The Habalia and Nusayrat refugee camps were victims of new incursions by the Tel Aviv regime, in which midst of which eight civilians were killed. Since the beginning of the siege, the occupation forces have destroyed entire neighborhoods through the action of military units and fighter planes. In Palestine, over 13,000 Gazans are missing, buried in mass graves under the rubble or detained in secret locations of the Israeli army. Human rights organizations urge the international community to take actions to introduce mechanisms and specialized teams to remove the rubble from the houses and buildings attacked in the Gaza Strip. They also ask to put international pressure on Israel to warranty the work and welfare of the people. Meanwhile, they called on the Israeli regime to reveal the whereabouts of the thousands of prisoners in the coastal enclave. In Palestine, Muslim families celebrated the Eid al-Fatir holiday amidst shelling and famine caused by the total siege of the Gaza Strip by Israeli forces. In the midst of the festival of breaking the fast, marking the end of the month of Ramadan, the Israeli occupation army launched multiple attacks on the devastated Palestinian enclave. In this regard, at least five people were killed and several others were wounded during the early morning following shelling and artillery attacks on a residential building and a school in the Nusayrat camp. 
In addition, at least two mosques located in the camp were targeted. Since October 7, 33,482 Palestinians have been killed by Israel, most of them children and women. In Pakistan, at least 17 deaths and dozens injured were the casualties of a truck accident. Such vehicle was carrying pilgrims by the time it rolled over into a ditch. The accident occurred on Wednesday in the hub district, Baluchistan province. Deputy District Commissioner Munir Ahmed said that over 70 people had set out on a pilgrimage to Sa Nurani, the shrine of a 15th century Sufi saint. According to preliminary information, the vehicle rolled over into a curve. The driver was also wounded and is now in custody. A traffic accident occurred near Nurani Cross. Our control room received the information at 1.15 local time. We sent ambulances. There were 35 to 40 injured and about 17 deaths. They were first transferred to the civil hospital in Balakistan and then the corpses were brought here to the Edhi Sorab Goth Center. We have a final short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Panama, a new wave of fires at the capital's main dump caused health issues to residents of the surrounding areas. The largest garbage dump in the Caribbean nation, known as Cerro Patacón, increases daily by 40% of solid waste from all over the country. Fires have become common in the area. In this context, medical personnel report several cases of pulmonary diseases due to the gases emitted by the flames. Several Panamanian social organizations have complained to the government about the lack of response to the situation. Russian authorities donated more than 90 tons of humanitarian aid to the town of Orenburg after the flooding of the Ural River, which left hundreds of victims. The Ministry of Defense detailed that the supply was taken to the airport in the city of Orsk with food, basic necessities and medicines. Due to the seriousness of the situation in the province and other nearby regions, the authorities decided to declare a federal state of emergency. According to official figures, some 11,972 residential houses and 14,991 plots of lands are affected by the flooding. The death toll from a hydroelectric power plant explosion in Italy rose to five on Thursday as rescue teams found two more bodies and two workers are still missing. Emergency services go down almost a dozen floors below the water level at the Enel Green Power Plant in Barghi on Lake Suviana near Bologna. About 100 firefighters, including 12 divers, remain at the site to search for the two persons who are still missing. The turbine of the hydroelectric power plant exploded on the eighth floor underwater, killing five people. The cause remains undetermined. However, Visconti confirmed flooding at the ninth plant due to a turbine cooling pipe that brought several meters of water. The military junta of Mali lifted a regulation that prohibits political parties from carrying out activities that could disrupt public order. In a local TV broadcast, the leader of the junta, Abdullaye Maiga, announced the suspension of political agendas for an indefinite, indefinite period since the presidential elections were cancelled indefinitely in 2023 after the COP d'etat of 2020. Let us remember that Mali is living a political climate of political instability due to the action for more than 10 years of insurgency of extremist groups. 
And we are going to the world of sports. The Venezuelan Johan Granado qualified for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games after reaching the final of the pre-Olympic Taekwondo tournament held in the city of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. The athlete, only 24 years old, reached his Olympic gold by beating Colombian John Garrido in the semi-final round in a continuous way into rounds of two of 8 to 2 and 10 to 3. Granado's outstanding performance was not only worth him for reaching the grand final of the competition, but also became the 25th athlete to join the Venezuelan Olympic Committee that will travel to the next Olympic Games in Paris 2024. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telecityenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok. For Telecity English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.